Hi everyone, I'm Danny and I'm an admissions consultant here at The Profs, helping with engineering and sciences admissions applications to some of the top universities in the UK, such as Oxbridge and Imperial. We're now going to be looking at how to get into Imperial for engineering. Imperial is a very prestigious uni. It's actually quite a very recently made uni, so it's not got the same history as Oxbridge, but it's still very prestigious. And you can see that by its entrance requirements for a lot of its courses. It's got a special focus on the sciences. So its engineering courses are very, very popular. So getting into Imperial is no easy task, just as it is for a lot of the other top unis in the UK. So firstly, we could talk about some of the uh, admissions entry requirements for Imperial. Imperial has a minimum entry requirement of AAA for some of its engineering courses, and then A star, A star A for some of its other engineering courses, such as chemical engineering and electronic uh, and information engineering. So typically, a lot of students tend to be interested in these more oversubscribed and therefore higher entry requirement um, courses, such as the chemical engineering and electronics one. These you might find are very difficult to get into because these grade requirements are so high and higher, higher typically than what Cambridge and Oxford might tend to expect from candidates. Imperial places a great emphasis on your grades and predicted grades, as well as your uh, admissions test performance as part of this application process. In terms of a timeline of applying to Imperial, so you'll apply uh, on UCAS as you do with all your other applications. So you just put Imperial as another option. Unlike Oxbridge, you don't have to submit your application earlier than the, uh, the October window. So you can submit it up until that January deadline, like with other UK universities. And what this means is that Imperial tends to hold interviews in slight cycles. So because they know or they get a lot of Oxbridge candidates who apply by October time, they'll sometimes have interviews for Imperial in November. And then a lot of the people who apply by the January side of the UCAS window then they'll tend to hold interviews in and around the February, February side of the year. And not being called up for an interview doesn't mean that you won't get an offer. It just means that some courses sometimes would like you to be invited for an interview. Also, just to show you around the campus, see what the university is like, as well as ask any questions that you, you may have about the course. And also a chance to just show yourself a bit more beyond the personal statement in the application to the university. So in submitting that application, whether you choose to do it quite early on, before October or before January, then this involves submitting a personal statement. And in this personal statement, we have a few questions that ask about our intentions, about our enthusiasm, and what we enjoy about engineering. So this is a good way to show your passions and interests and to give the university a good flavor of what it is you're actually interested in and why you want to pursue that course. You want, you want to make a good impression that shows your aptitude as well as enthusiasm, because some people might have the correct grades, but might not actually enjoy engineering as much as they might want, which can become evident as you're filling out this application. Or they might be really passionate about engineering, but they might not have the necessary grades to get onto really oversubscribed courses, such as uh, the Imperial one. So you need to try and make sure that you have both. And by that, I mean that you do genuinely, genuinely enjoy engineering and you can show that by having read uh, lots of books on it or maybe done projects or worked in clubs at school that show that outside of just learning your school uh, physics and maths that you do genuinely care about the subject and also showing how the subjects you've learned at school and the grades that you've got in those show that you got the necessary capabilities for completing a difficult engineering undergraduate course at Imperial. It is worth mentioning that unlike Oxbridge, which do general engineering courses, Imperial subjects are split into strands. As highlighted earlier, there's some such as chemical engineering and electronic engineering. We also have things such as design and then computing, which kind of falls into that, uh, into that same branch of, uh, of the engineering department, as well as some other courses such as aeronautics. So Imperial is great for people who are looking to apply for specific subjects rather than a general engineering course. So you might be specifically interested in mechanical engineering or specifically interested in electronics, and therefore this might suit you and you could possibly perform better on this kind of course compared to doing a general engineering 
at Oxbridge where you might do a lot of modules that you just really don't care about or you know you will struggle on and will affect your overall, overall grade because you don't tend to get specialized in those Oxbridge courses until later on around third or fourth year. With, with that being said, uh, the predicted grades that you'll be putting on this application count for a lot. So because Imperial has such high entry requirements, making sure that your predicted grades are as high as possible will put you in a good position for the application to the course. Because as a lot of universities know, people tend to miss these uh, predicted grades because schools can inflate, inflate these grades. So students should try and apply with hopefully at least a grade above their minimum entry requirements. So if it's two A stars and A, try and apply with at least a three A star uh, predicted grades. Because if you do end up missing that final A star, at least hopefully you'd get that two A stars and an A that can admit you onto the course. After you've submitted your application, you can be called up to interview, as I mentioned earlier. These interviews are not typically the most technical. So sometimes they'll feature questions related to your uh, A-level studies, maybe the A-star A type questions on your A-level maths and physics studies, but they don't tend to be that challenging for a lot of candidates, at least from my experience. So it changes year on year and Imperial, Imperial's interview process is not as well documented as for Oxford and Cambridge, but typically the interviews are more of a chance for the interviewers to just get to know you and also for you to get to know the university and see whether you'd be the right fit for it. So in terms of an offer rate compared to universities such as Oxford and Cambridge, you do see people who interview at Imperial do tend to get quite a lot of offers. You might be interested as to why that's the case. And that's because, again, related to the predicted grades, Imperial know that a lot of people will miss their offers. So unlike Oxford and Cambridge, they do tend to over offer to a lot of candidates. So the problem you might find with Imperial is it's all well and good getting the offer for Imperial, but actually meeting the offer is the real challenge because they can give you quite high entry uh, requirements for, for a certain course. So chemical engineering, I have a friend when I was when I was applying for courses, he had a chemical engineering offer from Imperial of three A stars and an A because he was doing four A levels. So three A stars and an A, which is almost unheard of for any other subject and much higher than what's expected. Getting to interview is not usually the most difficult part of a student, but actually meeting that offer is later. And usually through the help of admissions consultants, you can, while preparing for your interview and doing the personal statement parts of this application, you can also get that one-on-one -on -one contact that helps with making sure that you can get those A stars in your A levels and also just stretching you to extra or higher content that helps deepen your understanding of your A level content, which makes that A level subject such as physics and maths look so much easier in comparison. And that's what an admissions consultant would be able to provide in terms of helping you meet that grade in the end. So it's not just the admissions from getting the offer from Imperial because they do tend to over offer. If you were to start early and finish through with the whole process, you should be able to hopefully get that offer from Imperial for, en for an engineering course and also meet that offer in the end. Imperial also now uh, base their admissions decisions on the ESAT. So uh, with, their, uh, with their engineering courses, with the exception of chemical engineering, almost all of these uh, will use an ESAT course that involves you having to do the mathematics one, mathematics two, and the physics module on the ESAT. There's more information provided on how to ace ESAT that we've made in another video. So for most courses, you'll be having to do the maths one, maths two and physics. And then for chemical engineering, it will be maths one, maths two and chemistry that you'll need to pick in order to, uh, when you're sitting the ESAT for this. So Imperial will base their admission decision on these tests, but it's not as highly weighted as it would be for Cambridge because Imperial have such a high emphasis on predicted grades. And usually the way that Imperial admissions works is more of a minimum competency. So are you able to prove that you can get the right grades in the end for A-level and be able to be admitted onto course and also thrive, do well on their engineering courses. So rather than, rather than attempting to stand out, it's more proving that you're at least minimally competent and can get these really high grades that are needed because the ESAT would not form as much of the admissions process as it would for Cambridge, where that's a big differentiator compared to the personal statement 
So hopefully with doing well on the ESAT, you would be able to get called up for an interview if necessary, or possibly get an offer directly from this. And then the main challenge is meeting that offer in the end, as mentioned earlier. So what you find is with a lot of candidates that the, the process from apply, applying to getting the offer is not actually as bad as they might imagine or as tough as initially imagined, but getting the offer is really diff getting the offer in the end is really difficult where the admissions consultants on the prof can really help with, um, with acing, acing your A-levels and seeing the whole process uh, the whole way through. If you found that video useful, then feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and also share it around with any friends that you think might benefit from this video. If you have any questions about what was contained in the video or about applying to Imperial, engineering courses in general, then drop a question in the comments below and we'll aim to respond to it. If you feel like you could benefit from the help of an admissions consultant such as myself uh, from the profs, then feel free to contact the profs on the information provided on the screen right now. And as always, best of luck with your preparation and applying for Imperial or another range of top universities in the UK for engineering.